Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. deal with something that I kind of sensed, you know, through our little conversation, but like I said, we're going to answer with the scriptures, all right? Read John 17 and 9, please. The book of John, chapter 17 and verse 9, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. You know, it says, I pray for them, I pray not for who? For the world. What's that talking about? Jesus is saying, I pray for them, but I don't pray for the world. What is it? What is he talking about? Before we go somewhere else, what are we talking about? Okay. John, John, this is John what? John what? This is John 17, after John 316. I know what John 316 is. So John 317? No, this is John 17, chapter 17, verse 9. So can we start from verse 5, or verse 1 rather, and read to verse 9? No, no, no. Give me um, Isaiah 28 and 11. No, See? no, no, no. No, no I'm going to explain something to you. What is Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, we're teaching black history according to the Bible. If you've got a minute, I'm sharing uh, John 3.16 understanding of God so loved the world and, and uh, a, a method that has not been taught to us in church, right? Because most Christianity teaches us that Jesus came for everybody, right? And it doesn't matter what he looks like. But what we're going to do is we're going to read the Bible and find out, one, what he looks like, who he came, who he came for, right? That's very important. If you believe in the Bible, you believe in the Bible at all? Okay, perfect, perfect, right? So, let me read this for you. Just, just hold on for one second. I'm answering this sister's question, but I wanted you to listen to it real quick. Go ahead, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, and verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Sis, what's a precept? Do you know? Read it. For precept must be upon precept. It says, now the Bible is giving an instruction and the word that it's using is must, right? So this is important to know. It says precept must be upon precept. A precept is a rule, right? It is a rule. Is virtually, you can say like a verse, right? It says precept must be upon precept. Go up one, go up one verse before that. Let me explain. Verse nine. Let me explain why I went here. Read. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Whom shall understand this Bible is what Isaiah is writing. Read. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. Uh-huh, go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. So what we're getting is that precept must be upon precept in order to understand the Bible. When you read the Bible like a novel, which is what you were, were referencing when you said, go to verse 1 and read down, you only get a surface level knowledge. That's what the Bible just said. Keep reading. For precept must be upon precept. It says precept must be upon precept. Come on. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. It says you have to get a little bit from here and a little bit from there. That's what the Bible just told us to do. So when you read it like a novel, which is what is typically taught in the Christian church, you're only getting a surface level historical context for the most part. But the Bible just said, who's going to understand doctrine? Right. Who's going to understand what the Bible is really trying to get you to see spiritually? It says precept must be upon precept. And it said it repetitively so that you understand. If you read it like a novel, I'm, I'm still I'm still answering your first question, right? Because my question initially was before you asked the second one was, who was Jesus referring to when he says, "I pray for them, I pray not for the world." Give me James four and four. Right, but there was a whole. Uh, Give me James four, and then we're gonna get John three sixteen. Okay. Right, we're gonna really go through it. 
I'm still answering the first question, right? If we if we don't get through the first one, if we go to the next one, then we can't really well, get understanding. No, I didn't have the first question. Ask me a question. Uh huh. Then I asked you three. Uh huh. You said jump start jump one, but that's not. No, I didn't. Only seventeen and one. So what did I just read right now? I explained it. I understand. So let me, so this is you said you understand, saying. right? I understand what you, what you are saying. So I have a question now in response to my understanding of what you are saying. What's the question? So what, where does your understanding of the Bible come from? I just, ex read it again. No, that's not my question. Where does your understanding, is it intellectual? Is it logical? Is where, what, is, what is your, how do you receive your understanding? Give me Luke 24, 44. What? No, I'm, I'm sorry, give me Psalms, um, what is it, 111 and 10? I'm going to explain it to you. Right? Remember we said if you're going to answer, if you're going to speak, hold that, give me um, 1 Peter 4 and 11, and then we're going to get that. Because I want you to understand when I answer any question, right, and we're here to answer questions, we're going to use the words of God. I'm not going to give you my opinion because that's how we get different perspectives. Right? Read the you book of First Peter. Right, you have to let me answer before you, because then you're going to say I'm talking over you. All right, have a good you're going to say I'm day. talking over you. Absolutely. Give me one second. Let me let me finish it anyway. Read the book of First Peter, chapter four and eleven. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The Bible says if you're going to talk about the Bible, you have to speak with the scriptures. I don't. We don't come up here to give opinion. We don't come up here to hear opinion. Right. You must bring out the words of God That's right. with understanding. You follow me, my brother? With understanding, not with what the Christian pastor taught you or told you, right? You must bring it out, thus saith the Lord. And that's why we read Isaiah 28, 11. It said, precept must be upon precept, here a little and there a level. Little. That's how you understand the doctrine. Right. Now, give me Psalms 111 and 10, because there's a prerequisite. The second question was, how do you get your understanding? That was an excellent question. But the sister didn't stay around long enough to hear the answer right. because she had something in her head that she wanted to get across. She did not want to be taught. And that's what's wrong with our people. You believe that going across the street and listening to the pastor who went to seminary college is the way you get understanding of the Bible instead of listening to what God actually says. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The question that is about to be answered is, how do you get understanding of the Bible? Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all things that do his commandments. My brother, my brother, ask your question. What's your name again? Uh, Carter. What did it say? How do you get understanding? Good understanding of all things that what? Do, what is it, brother? Do his commandments. Read it again so that we all are clear on how you get understanding of the Bible. Thus, Carter. If you're not doing his commandments, what don't you have? Understanding. understanding. It's simple. It's simple. You're not going to understand the Bible if you're not doing what it says. What you're going to regurgitate is what someone told you. Right. That's what you're going to regurgitate. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all things that do his commandments. What's your question? Let me ask before you ask. You see stuff on the side, y'all? Like what, what's your what's your Well there's a quite a different um you've got Argentina, Chile, you've got the Aztecs, you've got Colombia and the Uruguay. You got Seminole Indians up here. Guatemala, Panama. We've got all the different indigenous peoples of the those that were uh, conquered by the conquistadors previously. So I guess my question is, what is a what? What is a creature? Are you referring to um, teach all creatures? What Jesus said? Yeah. Okay. What, what is a typical definition of a creature? Um, let's look up the word of a creature. And then what we'll do is go we'll precept upon precept and explain. The Great Commission, which is what you're speaking about. That's that's a very simple topic, but we'll do it step by step. What is a creature? Probably any living thing. Created, created. Yeah, right. That's, that's not. That's, this isn't. So, what does it say? Creature. Creature, an animal as distinctive from a human being. An animal distinct from a human being. So, do you think Jesus was telling the apostles to go teach animals? No. 
He wasn't saying that, but that's the definition of the word. He just asked. So he wasn't saying to teach animals. Who was Jesus talking about? By definition. Where's that? Dictionary. That's Google. Yeah. Basic Google definition. So, uh, all right. Let's get um, Matthew 28 and... Second, yeah. second to last verse. Yeah, second to last verse in Matthew, the last chapter of Matthew. Good question. We're gonna we're gonna explain it for you. Excellent question. You got it? Matthew chapter 20, yeah, I think this verse. Yes, absolutely. Let's start at verse 19. It's gonna say the same thing, right? Because you know that the account is the same, just with different words. We read the scripture that said precept must be upon precept. So let's get some understanding. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and the verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So now he said teach all nations. First he said teach all creatures. But we know he doesn't mean creatures, right? Now he's saying all nations. Why would Jesus say all nations, right? First you have to understand, as you see, just using words won't really give you understanding. Get Deuteronomy 4 and 27. Let's see why Jesus said, go out and teach all nations. He was you know. speaking of something that Moses prophesied. Remember, John 5, 48 said, if you believe Moses, you will believe me, because he wrote of me. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among all nations. Who is Moses writing about that would be scattered among all nations? Who? Israelites. That's right. So when Christ said, go and teach all nations, who is he talking about? The Israelites that were scattered among all nations. Make so here we go. Now we're in Oahu, right? We're, on the, we're, in, we're in Hawaii. We're trying to reach the same people Jesus said, go out and teach. Right? Give me Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. Because the Bible is redundant. It says the same thing over and over and over. So what happens with it is when a Christian doctrine comes up that's not found in the Bible, it's easily, it's easily smashed when you go precept upon precept. I'm not saying that's what you came up with, but we've heard that so many times, it was very easy to discern that you had a misunderstanding of what preacher meant. Jesus wasn't saying go teach animals, right? He wasn't saying go teach animals. He was saying teach the people in these different nations that have been scattered as prophesied by Moses. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. Read. Oh. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. But the house... Start at verse 4. Verse 4. And he said unto me, son of man... Verse 3, excuse me. Verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, call thy belly. No, I'm sorry, 2 and 3, excuse me. Chapter 2 and verse 3. The book of Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. Who was Ezekiel sent to go prophesy to? Children of Israel. The Bible says the same thing over and over and over. Give me Revelations now, chapter 22 and 12. Let's get the end of the Bible. It don't get no more New Testament than the book of Revelations. Let's get the end of the Bible now. Read that. Read up. The book of Revelations, chapter 22. No, um, what is it? Uh, 21 and 12, excuse me. The book of Revelations. Chapter 21 and verse 12. This is the kingdom of heaven. Read. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. There was 12 gates in the kingdom of heaven. Read. And at the gates, 12 angels. And at the gates, there was 12 angels. You know what those angels are there for? What do you think? Why would there be gates stationed at the entrances to the kingdom of heaven? And those who are going in, what about the people going in? Yeah, why would the angels be positioned at each entrance to the kingdom of heaven? I can postulate that it could be, uh, you have to be able to get in, you have to be on the I like that, that's right, you have to be able to get in. You have to be able to get in. And we're going to look at one of the prerequisites to getting in, out of the Bible. Read. And at a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gate twelve angels. You know over here, we're right next to a military base. You know what's stationed at the front of each entrance? Guards. That's what the angels are. Guards. Read. And names were in thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. You see what the names are that are written on each gate? You see who the entrance is for that's written on each gate? 
It's no different than trying to get on a snow field. You have to be have access to base. It's called base access, right? Same thing in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord will have 12 angels stationed at 12 gates. And if you are not one of the 12 tribes of Israel, you ain't getting in. Right. That's what the Bible says. Now, of course, you have to keep the commandments of the faith of Christ, which is what he read earlier. So here we are talking to our brother Carter. What's your name, brother? Dylan. Carter and Dylan, we out here. Um, here while he went now, we're trying to explain to you brothers, not only that you're the children of Israel, but what you must do to be able to get in through the gates. That's what we're here for, to, to show our people their lost heritage. Go ahead, brother. Did you understand what that said, though, about why I said go teach all nations? Okay. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.